From the first day of the month of Elul, this year, August 18th, until the end of Yom Kippur, this Monday night, September 25th, is a very intense and mindful period for Jews throughout the ages. We spend a lot of time examining our relationship with God, our families, communities, and humanity. And we resolve to up our goals and upgrade our commitment to do better this new year. The period is sandwiched with chauffeur blasts, starting with the first day of Elul and ending at the conclusion of Yom Kippur. What follows is a deeper understanding of this unique ritual. On Rosh Hashanah, we blow many blasts of the shofar. On Yom Kippur, which is the conclusion of Rosh Hashanah, and of the ten days of tshuva, we end the prayers of the day with one single long blast. What is the meaning behind the blasts of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur? The Torah tells us in Leviticus 25 that on Rosh Hashanah, Vahavarta Shefer Trua, you should cry out with a shefer. A cry is made up of short, broken sounds. But our tradition passed down all the way from Moses tells us that before each cry of the shofar, a long, straight, unbroken blast needs to be blown. And after the short, broken sounds of crying, another long, straight one. Like this. The reason why we blow Shefer is explicit in the Musaf prayer we recite on Rosh Hashanah, which was prophetically composed by the rabbis of the Great Assembly at the beginning of the Second Temple era, about 2,500 years ago. The blessing corresponding to Shofar tells us that the blasts are reminiscent of the Shefer God blew when he appeared on Sinai and gave us the Torah, as explicit in Exodus chapter 19, by And it is also symbolic of the Shefer that God is going to blow before the Messiah comes as explicit in the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 27. The two straight sounds that sandwich the broken ones in between them seem to parallel the two sounds we just mentioned, one that was blown at Sinai and one that will be blown before the Messiah. But what is the connection between the crying sounds tucked between the two longer ones? There's another interesting tradition the rabbis passed down to us in the Midrash called Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer. The ram that Abraham sacrificed in lieu of his son had two horns. The left was blown at Sinai. The right one will be blown before the Messiah comes. The Midrash continues, the sinews were used in David's harp. The skin was used to make a sash for Elijah the prophet. The ram itself was created at the moment when Friday of the six days of creation met the Shabbat. Ben Hashmashot, the non-second that connected these two days. This was when this unique ram was created. This year during Rosh Hashanah prayers, a thought came to me which I'd like to share with you. God created the world so that it could have a close and meaningful relationship with human beings. The Jews were chosen to lead the way, but eventually all mankind will be part of this unique relationship. In order to make this happen, we need to work on making ourselves more than just good and moral human beings. An infinite God cannot have a meaningful relationship with a simple mortal. We need to be godlike. We need to transcend our human limitations by becoming completely selfless. The six days of the week were meant for us to invest our daily lives with meaning and purpose, with spirituality, kindness, devotion, and love, but still within the confines of being human. The Shabbat is God's day when we disengage from the physical world and together with our families focus solely on life's meaning and purpose. It's a day we are meant to transcend. At the exact point where Friday meets Shabbat, God created the potential for this incredible unity between an infinite, indescribable God and finite human beings striving to be more godly. God is constantly calling out to us. He loves us and He needs us to fulfill His desire to be one with us. The call is so deep, coming from the very essence of God, that it cannot be contained in words. It is a primordial cry without words, just the pure straight sound of yearning reaching out to us calling us to come close, like God calling Moses to come to the burning bush where the Shekhinah will be manifest. We refer to it as God's cry, because it is similar to a human cry in the sense that it expresses something so deep that cannot be contained or expressed in words. But unlike our cries, it is not broken. God is perfect unity and serenity. That was the Shefer that we heard at Sinai. 
It was God's inner voice, which was so deep, so quintessential, it had no words. But we heard it loud and clear. And we responded, Nasa v'nishma, we are in. And then began a long journey, lasting over 3,300 years, full of ups and downs, successes and failures. Lots of failures. Every day we fail so many times. We forget about God. We forget about our loved ones. We engage in selfish pursuits. We gossip. We waste precious time. Of course, we also do a lot of good stuff. But we never really live up to our original commitment to lead perfectly godly lives. Every day we tell God tomorrow will be better. And we really do try sometimes, but we never really quite get there. Imagine a husband who tells his wife, You know, dear, I'm so sorry I ignored you today when you asked me something, but I was busy with my phone. And I'm sorry I forget I forgot to take out the garbage or pick up the milk you reminded me to pick up at least six times, but I had a very stressful day at work today. I'm also sorry about getting too close to my secretary. I will try to be more careful in the future. But there's also a lot of nice things I do for you, so I hope you will be forgiving. Nope, I don't think that's going to work especially if you do these things every other day. Thankfully, God's love for us is infinite, and so is His patience. And our bond is eternal and unbreakable, so unlike in a human relationship, divorce is not an option. So although that type of behavior is not going to cut it with your wife, and if you act like the above husband, you'll probably be out the door in less than two weeks. But God forgives us over and over and over again. Moreover, once a year during the special time, God says, You know what? Let's forget about all your failures. Let's start anew. But we know, and he knows, we're going to fall short again. And God says, I know, but it's okay. I know you tried, and I know you'll keep on trying. I still love you unconditionally, and someday you'll get there, and we'll be truly one. The chauffeur reenacts this dynamic. The first straight blast is God calling out to us from the very depths of his soul, the core of his being, like he did at Sinai. I love you. I need you. I want you to please connect with me. The middle sound, the broken ones, that's our response. We also don't have the words to express it, but from the depths of our hearts we are broken because we did not live up to our commitments. The sounds are broken because we are broken. We promise we will try again, and we do try, but we never really get there, although deep down we really want to. And then God says, it's okay, it's fine. I know you're trying. I forgive you. We will get there. We'll get there when the Messiah comes. Hang on. Stay in there. I'll never give up on you, and please do not give up on me. That's the straight sound after the broken ones. That's God's sound. God says, I know you have it in your genes. Abraham was so completely devoted to our relationship, he was even willing to give up his beloved son when I asked him to. Of course, I never meant him to do so. It's like a wife who asks her husband, Hey, honey, I want to tell you something. The doctor just told me I need a new heart. Do you mind if he cuts yours out and gives it to me? And the husband says, sure. Pass me the knife. She was kidding. But from the way he responded, she could feel his sincerity. She even noticed a tear trickle down his eyes as he was speaking. His unbreakable love to her was palatable. And that's all she needed to hear. Abraham solidified my choice as God, and you are his descendants. You have his DNA. I'm calling out to you from that ram's horn which replaced his son and reminds me of his unbreakable connection to me. And after our broken response that we will try to emulate our father Abraham, God responds, yes, I believe you because I know you have it within you. So rest assured that there will be another blast which I will blow with the other horn to usher in the messianic era and then our relationship will finally be complete. On Yom Kippur we end the day with one very long blast, but actually it's two blasts connected into one. God is calling out to us and we are calling out to Him until we are merged as one. The moment where Friday and Shabbat are touching. The day is ending. Ni'ila prayer is just about over. The gates of heaven will soon be closed and we will be locked inside together with God for all eternity. Finally, we're not crying any more broken cries. Our final blast is a straight blast, a blast of confidence, a blast that represents the clarity we have that yes, indeed we are yours and we will be yours forever. And then a call from the innermost essence of God, and a call from the core of our quintessential being merged into one long single blast. And that is how we end the intense experience we began 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, when we started to blow the shofar. We then immediately begin to prepare for Sukkot and Simchat Torah, eight days of celebration, 
celebrating yet another reaffirmation of our unbreakable relationship with our Father in Heaven. Wishing you all a very meaningful Yom Kippur and a joyous Sukkot. May we all speedily experience the final blast of the shofar, which will usher in the final redemption with the coming of Mashiach, son of King David, whose harp was created from that very same ram, from that unbroken connection with God solidified during the Akedah, the binding of Isaac, which created the eternal binding of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with God till the end of time. And Eliyahu, Elijah, whose belt also comes from that ram, from that very same act of uncompromising devotion, Elio Anovi will appear and announce that our long journey and exile is finally over. We made it. Our relationship will now be unbroken. No more broken cries, no more challenges, no more tests. We succeeded beyond our imagination. Now, forever, God and us are one. Wishing all of you and all of the Jewish people a very meaningful Yom Kippur. And may all of you, together with all of mankind, be sealed for a beautiful and sweet, peaceful and prosperous year in every possible way.